Welcome everyone. Let's begin our lesson for today by going over the learning goals and success criteria. First, what are we learning? We're learning how to graph linear inequalities using slope and y-intercept, how to use the correct line and shading for graphs of inequalities, and how to write linear inequalities from graphs of those inequalities. How are we learning it? Through the graphs of linear inequalities notes, the graphs of linear inequalities assignment, and the x marks the spot assignment. When can we use this information? To determine which scores you can receive on your final exam that will allow you to pass the course, and to determine how many of each kind of product you might need to sell to reach a goal profit. How do you know you learned it? By getting a score of 4 on the graphs of linear inequalities assignment and a 4 on the X marks the spot assignment. Now let's take a look at our agenda for today. We will begin by going over the learning goals and success criteria. While we do that, you'll fill out your Get It Started. Once you've completed your Get It Started, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. Next, we'll do our weekly raffles. And then we'll go over the graphs of linear inequalities notes. And then after that, if you have not already gotten a score of four on your IXL activity, you'll be working on the graphs of linear inequalities assignment on IXL. If you have gotten a four, you will move on and do the X marks the spot assignment. At the end of class, we'll go back over our learning goals and success criteria while you fill out your before you go. Your only homework for tonight is to continue working on the Systems of Linear Inequality Study Guide and any incomplete assignments that you may have. Let's take a look now at the graphs of linear inequalities notes. The notes begin with the learning goals and success criteria. Now let's take a look at how we graph linear equations before we get into inequalities. So when we graph a linear equation, the first thing we do is we pick out the slope and the y-intercept, and we're going to graph those points. So we plot the y-intercept which in this case is negative 2, so I'm going to go down 2 and plot my point. Then I'm going to use the slope to plot the second point. So this tells me I'm going to go change in y of 1, so I'm going to go up 1, change in x of 2, so I'm going to go to the right 2, so up 1 to the right 2, and I plot my point there, and then I connect the dots, and now I have a linear equation that's been graphed. Now how does this apply to inequalities? Well, with inequalities, we're going to graph them the same way. So just like we did before, we're going to plot the y-intercept, which in this case is negative 2, so I go down 2 and plot that point. Then I use the slope to plot the second point. Well, this is change in y, so we're going up 1 to the right 2. So we go up 1 to the right 2, plot my point, connect the dots, and now I have my line. Now the difference is we're going to shade where the y values are bigger than the line. So I'm going to look at the y-axis here, and I'm going to see where the line crosses, which is here, and I want all the y's that are bigger than that line. Well, they're all up here, so I'm going to shade that area up there above the line. So the shading is a new aspect of graphing that we need to consider. The other part is what kind of line to use. So similar to before where we talked about the open circle versus closed circle, same thing here. Every inequality gets a dotted line or an open line. Notice that it's open because there's little spaces in between. So every inequality gets an open line or a dotted line. If they add more to the inequality, we do too, meaning if they add the bar underneath, then we're going to add to it and make it a solid line. So in this case, we have y is less than x. Well, I'm looking if they added anything extra, meaning that did they add the bar here? If they didn't, which in this case they didn't, we'll leave it as it is and it stays as a dotted line. Now here's an example of x is greater than or equal to 2. Now they did add something extra, they added the bar here, so we'll add to it as well and we'll make this a solid line or a closed line. So how does that apply to our inequalities? Well when we graph these we have y is less than 3 halves x. So we're going to plot the y-intercept first. Notice there is none listed here, so our y-intercept is 0. So I'm going to go here to 0 and plot my point. And my slope is 3 halves, so I'm going to go up 3 to the right 2. So I go up 3 to the right 2, plot my point. And normally, I would just connect the dots. But I need to check to make sure I have the correct line, which in this case, they didn't add anything extra, so I don't either, so it be, should be a dotted line. So there's my dotted line. Now I just need to shade it. So it says y is smaller than the line. So I'm going to go along my y-axis and find where it meets the line, which is here. And I want all the y's that are smaller. 
All of those are down here, so I'm going to shade everything on this side of the line. Let's look at another example. We have y is less than or equal to negative x minus 3. So again, I'm going to plot my y-intercept first, which is negative 3. So I go down 3 here. And my slope is just negative x, which should be, which really is negative 1. So that's negative 1 over 1. So that means I'm going to go down 1 to the right 1 and plot that point. Again, normally I just connect the dots. But I need to make sure I have the correct line. Well, they did add something extra, so we will too. So we're going to have a solid line. And now we just need to shade the graph. It says y is smaller than the line. So I'm going to go along my y-axis and find where they meet, which is here. And I'm going to look all the y's that are smaller than the line, which are down here. So I'm going to go ahead and shade this area here. And that's how I graph the linear inequality. There is a video here that shows you how to check your work using Desmos after you've already graphed the linear inequality, so you can check it using Desmos. Let's talk now about how to check our work using Desmos when working with linear inequalities. So we're going to let Desmos graph linear inequalities for us so that we can check that against the work that we've done on our activities. So we're going to go to Desmos.com and we're going to click on Graphing Calculator. And now we're going to go ahead and enter the inequality that we want to graph. So let's say it's y. Now to do the, the inequality symbols, we'll go down here to where it says keypad and click there. And here's all your inequality symbols. So let's say it's greater than or equal to. And then we can put in uh, 3 halves x minus 5. And now it graphed the inequality for us, it shows the type of line right here and the shading. Now if it wasn't or equal to, we can see that it creates a dotted line, so it will create the correct type of line and it will show the shading of where it's where the shading should occur. So that's how you can use Desmos to check your work when dealing with linear inequalities. Let's talk now about how to access your assignments on IXL using SB link. So what you'll do is you'll click on the link that takes you to your SB link, which should look like this. And you're going to log in the same way you would log into your computer. So the first part for your username is going to be the first part of your email address without the at sbcusd.ca.us. So it should be your last name, first initial, middle initial, and then the last four of your student ID. Then for your password, it's the same password you use to log into your Chromebook. From there, you'll go ahead and click sign in. And it should take you to a page that looks kind of like this. You're going to go find the link that says IXL, which is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that link. And it should take me to the IXL login page. So it should look like this. At the top right corner, it should say welcome and then your name. If it does not say your name, then you're not logged in and you won't receive credit for your work. As long as this is good, you can go ahead and close that tab out. And then you can go to your Google Classroom. And then you'll go and find the activity, which is here. And I'm going to click on the IXL link right here. And this will take me to the assignment that I need to complete. So that's how you log in to your assignments on IXL using SB Link. Let's take a look now at the graphs of linear inequalities assignment. The assignment begins with the learning goals and success criteria. If we scroll down, there's a link here to take you to SB Link. This will allow you to log in so that you can access your IXL activity. Once you've logged in, return to this page and then click on this link to get to your IXL activity. And it should take you to a page that looks like this. So we're given a question that looks like this. X is less than or equal to negative 2. So we're going to go ahead and plot the points. So notice it doesn't mention Y at all. It just says that X is negative 2. So I'm going to go here to where X is negative 2, right here. Again, Y doesn't matter. So 
x is always going to be negative 2, so I'm going to click some point around here. And now I'm going to check to make sure I have the correct line. I can see that they have added a bar, so they added something, so I do too. So it's going to be a closed line. Now if I wanted to change this to a dotted line, I just click on the line and it changes it to dotted. If I click on it again, it'll change it back to a closed line. So that's the way I want it. I want a closed line. And I want all the x's that are smaller than negative 2, smaller than this line. So I find the line here. And I want all the x's that are smaller. Well, I look along the x-axis and all the x's that are smaller are over here. So I'm going to click there. And notice now it shaded the graph. I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. It tells me I got it right. My SMART score went up, and it sends me on to the next question. Now let's take a look at one like this. So it says Y is less than 6. Now again, notice there's no X this time. So I'm going to go over here, find where Y is 6, which is here. And again, X doesn't matter. So Y is always going to be 6. So I'm just going to draw a line across Y equals 6. They didn't add anything extra, so I won't either. So it's going to be an open line. And I want where all the Y's are smaller. So I'm going to go along the Y axis. I find the line. And I want where the Y's are smaller than that line. Well, they're smaller down here. So I'm going to shade that part. I'm going to click Submit. It tells me I got it right and sends me on to the next one. Now for this one, it actually does include a Y and an X value. So I'm going to plot it just like I would if it was a linear equation. So I'm going to plot the y-intercept first. Well, the y-intercept is 3. So I go up 1, 2, 3 and plot my point. And my slope is negative 2 thirds. So I'm going to go down 1, 2 and to the right 1, 2, 3 and plot my point. So now I have my line and I need to check to make sure I use the correct one. They added a bar underneath. They added something extra, so we do too. So it would be a closed line. And we want all the y's that are bigger. So I'm going to go along the y-axis. Here's my line, and I'm going to figure out where my y's are bigger. Well, they're bigger up here. So I'm going to click there. Notice it's shaded above now. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Submit. It tells me I got it correct, and my SMART score continues to go up. So you'll continue to answer these questions until you get a SMART score of 80. That's what you need to get a 4. So just keep answering questions. If you miss a question, that's OK. Your SMART score will drop a little bit. Just keep answering questions until your SMART score goes back up. And then when you're done with that, you're going to go back to your Google Form and click Next. This will send you on to your Before You Go. Go ahead and answer your Before You Go, and then submit your work on Google Classroom.